a lunch to the presentation on visualizing and validating linked data. Uh, so my name is Yash, and uh, they are Matthias, Tamir, and Jad are the key brains involved in this project. It's a part of a uh, research project, project Azim, and Eskania is an industrial partner, and we have been uh, experimenting with linked data, how we can visualize and uh, validate linked data. So my name is Yash, and I'm a consultant, research and development engineer at Scania, working with uh, Eclipse Elastic Applications and Linked Data since last few months. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn with Yash Khatri and GitHub, same. I'm also a committer and contributor at Eclipse Leo, and I have been involved with Eclipse Leo Designer, uh, which is a model based engineering tool for OSNC systems, and uh, Leo Validation, which we'll be talking about today. Uh, I'll not talk about the uh, new designer in detail, which we'll be covered in a talk by Andre and Zahad tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to present my perspective on the search and browse and Leo validation, nothing official Scania statements. Uh, link data, I don't think I need to cover this again, thanks to the talk by Professor Soren, all of the basics have been already covered. I'll just show how uh, the enterprise link data and Scania have been applied. So, Shrug is a uh, real well, entity and it's related to another, which is, which is we call it as a resource, and uh, the tire is another resource uh, related to each other. The property has path, which in turn is related to another resource company, is a good rich, by a property manufactured by, uh, and then so on. It keeps on increasing. So, this is how the, the price in data and uh, Scania may look like. Uh, the research project, project Azium. So there may be more pro uh, there may be more projects or applications we have been working with, but I will be describing about search and browse, uh, which is a cross-domain availability aware data exploration application for visualizing linked data. I'll be talking in detail also about the Eclipse Leo relation, uh, how we can validate and confirm the linked data against some particular set of <coughs> schema or constraints, and uh, how we can uh, do the safety analysis too. Uh, I'm not talking today about new designer today, but uh, but how we are using new designer and how it is helping us to um, design the schema for uh, for the tools, how they will be uh, integrated with each other, how the data is related to the different tools. We'll have a look on it. Uh, so this is a picture from of new designer taken from its GitHub page. Uh, so this is this is just to show how this tool may look like. This is a Eclipse plugin. Uh, here is a set of uh, tools, not clearly visible, but okay. Uh, <laughs> this is a editor where each domain represents a tool here, and uh, the resources represent the entities and how they are related to each other and maybe two different entities and other tools or domains. Uh, this is a property view where the properties of the resources can be seen and moreover the constraints on it can be set. The constraints can be a very simple constraint, can be a cardinality constraint. For example, a property um, title should exist and should, there should be only one title and not more than one, for example. Uh, we are using this new designer for this. Uh, we are not using all the capabilities of the designer or OSLC here, but the capability to create the OSLC shapes and, uh, and then map it to the shackle shapes to uh, to use the property of uh, shackle to confirm it against the uh, confirm the schema against data. So uh, I'll show you how we are doing that. So some of the challenges in Scania, uh, of course, developing autonomous vehicles, and with this there increases the complexity of the data. Uh, with not only in autonomous but in non-autonomous vehicles, the data from uh, every uh, component or entity. Uh, also needed for customizing customization, plus uh, safety analysis also to check if it is following the uh, legislation standards and maybe the business rules within this college. To meet these challenges, uh, it's often to rely on the engineering data, which is no doubt uh, duplicated from uh, different databases or different tools. If we want to use them in another tool, data is sometimes duplicated. When Transferring data is sometimes inconsistent, heterogeneous, uh, ambiguous, invalid, uh, 
not following the standards or not following the constraints and most often out in the digital format where we can visualize the data and actually see the quality of the data. Uh, Such so data reduces efficiency and acts as an obstacle to getting the most. Uh, some of the ways to overcome the data issues are firstly to digitally uh, view the data where we can actually see the, how the data is related to other resources, other data from other tools. And uh, of course, to have a clean data, removing duplications, following proper standards, which may be a worldwide standard or maybe it's kind of standard or company-wide standard. Integrated data, well, needed for traceability of how this data is generated, how this uh, related to other mm -hmm. data from other tools. And also to uh, manage the variability and version of the data on different data objects. Uh, moreover, uh, enabling uh, this arbitrary cross lifecycle and cross domain uh, data access from a single tool, from a single point of view, where we can, we don't need to uh, go to the databases of different tools and visualize the data individually, but can see it from a single point and really help and. Uh, uh, solving some of the problems and also in analyzing the data for the safety case. So uh, <coughs> this is uh, okay. So here, um, this is approach how we are con or how we are putting the data of different tools in single uh, database. Uh, this is something covered by in the talk by Professor Sor and like there are different tools. Jira, uh, requirements management, uh, and other tools. And they have individual databases with uh, individual uh, database technology, maybe following relational or something else. Doesn't matter. The, the thing is that they are not following the same standards so that the data can be connected easily. Uh, so, this architecture, according to this architecture, we are having a linked data adapters on each tool which, take, which reads the data from their indi individual uh, database and then converts it into the linked data and stores them as a triple store. Uh, the schema manager and rule manager here shows how the data should be uh, related, how it should be linked, and uh, what are the constraints of the data. This is, uh, this is designed using the Lear designer, which I'll show in brief. The store API uh, is a, it's just a Java API for uh, doing a crude operations on the linked data. And its validation engine, uh, it validates data, it, under, uh, it follows, or it uses the new <coughs> validation library to validate the data and show us the quality of the data. So, yeah, and as, as I told, uh, story is used for reading the data and doing the current operations on the triple store. So, validation engine, it reads the data from here, uh, execute results, store back, the, uh, store back the validation results in the form of a linked data so that they can be visualized on the on this linked data visualization platform, which is such a large design show you. I also have a demo to show you. And then such a large panel used for visualizing the data. These three are uh, Eclipse Leo components. Eclipse Leo, uh, we will talk in detail tomorrow. I'll be uh, covering it in such a browse. So such a browse, it's uh, Google for uh, for searching uh, linked data and uh, browsing uh, data to from one tool to different tool and it, without knowing which tool the data comes from or where we are actually browsing or actually uh, going to linking to. It's a cross domain variability aware data exploration application, which is which has the main purposes or which is used for. Firstly, ex uh, of course, to search the data and uh, explore the data, uh, not only in the textual format, but also in the graphical format. Is a, we'll see how it, uh, what I mean by graphical format over here. Uh, by this, it helps us in uh, uh, following the change effect analysis and dependency analysis, how the data is dependent on another data, and changing one data, how to tell the creates a difference or it affects other data. Moreover, uh, there is some, there's possibility to do some uh, analysis on the linked data layer, and based on this analysis, we can 
this analysis can be a um, validation analysis just to see if the data is following the constraints or can be a safety case analysis. And we can uh, we can have a look or we can view the results of uh, these analysis on the link uh, on the search and browse, which can be safety case exploration or be a designer schema rules, business rules or, or and of course to unify the data exclusion capability in a single tool. So it's just one tool, one interface, and we can um, explore and search the data from uh, integrated data for some of Moreover, uh, uh, there is a possibility of a delegated UI uh, such as browsing on another tool. So we can uh, uh, we can uh, have a kind of, kind of eye frame where we can just search the data and we can have a look on custom exploration pages where we if you want to see the details of particular resource or the properties of it and so on. Uh, so it's just a read only uh, tool uh, with no possibility to uh, edit the data actually. And the common integration platform is uh, it's example here like this is this is an example of one of the tool and where there is a need to uh, enter uh, the change request over here and to see what are the possibilities be for example if you click on this this is a uh, screenshot from a search and browse where we can see uh, what are the change requests available and on selecting one of them and finally on hovering over there we can see uh, the more details the properties of the that change particular change request so we don't have to go to anywhere to actually see the properties of the same request and we can just can be integrated as a delegated UI into the tools. Uh, the possibility to view and browse the data graphically. Uh, we'll see how it, what I mean by this. Uh, moreover, we can see the warnings for data if there is some particular uh, constraints failing or some safety cases are not uh, confirmed in the data, which we have done analysis on the link data layer. Uh, a possibility to browse data based on different domains which would express the new designer, for example. Tabular representation, of this. And integration of uh, other visual representations. Like more uh, different visual uh, applications, for example, we have uh, another view of the data, uh, which we call hardware software, is integrated in the, uh, it's, in the, it's integrated in such a browser. And similarly, there are more possibilities to integrate the different views which we might be using. Uh, I'll be talking uh, about validation engine and uh, new validation. New validation is a, uh, I'll be uh, showing a demo of such a browse, so we'll see how it actually looks and how it actually works. Uh, new validation uh, is a Java library uh, for validating the linked data and conforming the RDF data uh, against the schema, which we, uh, which is a shackled, uh, which is a shackled schema actually. Uh, we'll have a look at it. So yeah, new designer. Uh, so here, uh, so this is the, uh, this is the, this is one of the resource. Uh, say uh, for here, for example, this is a single. And here are the properties of that particular resource. and here we can set the constraints so that uh, for example the, it's not visible over here but it's it's good it's an allowed value and the allowed value are intel and motorola and this property is byte order so for example this particular property only allowed values are intel and motorola and other values should not be the correct value uh, this the validation library uh, has the capability to uh, read this oslc uh, shapes and uh, um, this uh, new designer creates OSLC shapes uh, has the capability to create the OSLC shapes which are which is actually the Java objects with uh, constraints and set in the form of OSLC annotations. The slave animation library reads that OSLC annotations and maps them to the shackle uh, shackle version of that and creates a shackle schema. Now what is shackle? Uh, okay. So yeah, this is just an example. This is just an instance of that particular signal. It's a data, actual data, and the property I was talking about in the previous slide 
the byte order and its value here is Intel and uh, then the, uh, this is a, I'm calling this invalid data because the value over here is Kanye. And Shekel is a uh, shapes constraint language which has the capability to uh, actually iterate over the RDF graph and and um, detect the errors in the in the graph based on the schema or the constraints which are which we are set. And the schema is called uh, Shekel schema. So this layer validation library in the back end actually uh, utilizes the capability of Shekel to actually detect the errors and then uh, and then show us the errors. So this is how the Shekel schema looks like. The layer validation library creates all, uh, creates this uh, in the memory, and uh, it's all automated based on the constraints which we have set on the new designer. So this is the property byte order, and uh, here is the constraint minimum min min count one, maximum count one, and it should exist for sure. And the value allowed are Intel and Motorola only. Let me see uh, these two slides together. So this is the actual data, and this is the invalid data. And according to this uh, schema, uh, this value should is okay, but this value is not okay. So this is why this coding is an invalid data, and then this relation library can show us that okay, this data is not conforming the schema which you have set for it. Uh, we'll have a look on the demo. So uh, this is the front page of uh, Such and Browse. Uh, this is still a prototype. So, for example, I'm searching one of the user function, but uh, let's see what it gives me. So. Uh, Uh, this gives me what all are the hits based on my search. Uh, now I can start browsing based on the different types of the resources, what all are relevant, most relevant to this search. Moreover, I can start uh, browsing based on the different domains which I have uh, pre-specified. These are the filters. Uh, I'll take. Uh, I'll take it in three minutes. Uh, moreover, we, here we can just have a look on the tabular view. Here are some of the properties which are decided to this uh, this resource to have, but they are missing. So showing dash over here. Uh, now this page shows that how the variants and versions can also be managed or can also be viewed in such a browse. So uh, here, uh, it's, it's kind of a multi-dimensional browsing, like here, they are the top layer of uh, items or resources, then here are the variants and versions of that. And then this is the actual uh, resource and the properties and the description of the resources. So. So for example, uh, now I was uh, browsing based on the domains. And uh, so they are, these are the fun uh, functional elements and these are different variants of them. Moreover, these are the different versions of particular variants of functional elements. And here I can see how this functional element is related to uh, other uh, resources, which are the user functions or, or how it is, uh, or, or to which resource this functional element is allocated to. I can then just keep on browsing and can go into a silent form user function and uh, now jumping into a ECU assembly and so on. Uh, now here are some icons which shows me the quality of the data. This is not visible in everywhere because the data is not there. This is the demo data. But uh, we can have this for all the resources, the validation results. And this shows the quality of the data. The green over here 
show that it is following the constraints and the safety uh, analysis which we have decided and uh, it is shown okay by the validation library and this year and this year shows that safety rules some of the safety rules are validated and they show some of the syntactic rules are validated and moreover we can go into the validation result uh, and can look into detail what old rules were, were validated or were tried upon and was it conforming or not. Uh, this is just an example but can have in more detail what exactly each rule failed and, uh, and so on. And who is responsible for uh, this data and where this data comes from and so on. Uh, moreover, uh, we can have a graphical view of this particular resource and then keep on and then keep on uh, browsing graphically and it can just keep on increasing. Uh, and this, uh, these are the filters uh, where, for example, if I want to see a particular resource, which, uh, with, for example, this is a FPC code or a code for uh, what all elements are possible only in bus. This is cost kind of specific, but what all elements are only possible in bus. And I can filter them. And then all the resources which are not possible for the bus are grayed out and, and others are available to see and this is how we can also filter on uh, particular uh, provisions. So yeah, that's all I have to say today. Thank you very much, Yash. Uh, any questions in the audience? I know. I have one. So even one of your first slides is that you have an, an, a linked data adapter uh, to your data sources. Uh, why did you decide on having just linked data and not using OCC there? Is there a particular reason for that, or what are the main main concerns? What you have not using OCC? Uh, maybe that was not the need of the moment. Uh, we, uh, our primary concern was to uh, visualize the data and uh, just send the data from different databases. So, uh, current need was to just have the data in the form of linked data, not following all the constraints or all the different means of the versions. Okay. Just um, could you know? what your target users are? Like, will they be from multiple departments? Is this something for, I don't know, can you say about something about, yeah, what, what? Target users for such a browser only validation. For both, uh, is this a generic capability that multiple departments would use, or uh, is yes. it specific to a project program? Uh, no, oh, okay, so I will take one by one. So for new validation, this is just a validation library for validating link data. It can, it can be useful for any, anyone, any developer <coughs> working with the link data. So what they need to do is they just need to have a shackle schema or new designer to design the schemas for them and uh, just can use it. And this search and browse, uh, it is also uh, contributed to Slio, available open source for use and scoring further. Search and browse, this is uh, the use case uh, within uh, Scania was that to uh, have the capability to see the data from different departments and, and from a single platform. Uh, because there is a need to see the traceability of uh, the data and, and this is a way to solve that. Uh, there might be some issues like safety issues of the data and so on, but then it is the case that that data should not be there. It just if I can compliment that, I mean the driving force is the safety case. Yeah. In this research project. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the main thing. And then, of course, to make it easy to access the data. Okay. 
have you been able maybe to quantify like the time you gain by using the search and browse compared to I don't know traditional ways of looking at emails, documents, I don't know, to find the information you're, you you need to look at? Like can you put a dollar value and say this is how much uh, is saved? This is good. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm not the right person to answer the question. Okay. It's a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I've been involved as a developer in this uh, rather than a So generally it's been this, the driving force was the business, no sorry, the, the, the safety, safety case, case, as in satisfying the, uh, there's a standard for the ESO 26262, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then it's just been, a, uh, yeah, Getting access to the data potentially can lead to other usages. Yes, yeah. It's been of interest for that reason. Okay. That's one reason more why this business case calculation is so difficult because first of all to start needs to do some certain investment and yeah, others will benefit from it yeah. and make those yeah. use cases or this business case much easier than the first one. Too bad, yeah. But but that's the numbers we are looking for, just to prove to our management, hey, there's really some dollars that you gain by doing this. But safety is like a binary, right? Yeah, so there's no right. dollars that's easy, you have to but be satisfied. So. Therefore, it's sometimes easier to argue with safety. You yeah. have it or you don't, and it, you don't have to look at the dollars. So. Anyway, but you could do it another way. So if you have to do it by the way, we have used view of validation, so thank you very much. Thank you for the contribution. Okay. Very cool. Well, yeah, just thesis. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, thesis for this. All right, you're very useful. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you again, Yash. Thank you. Uh, I'm doing. <laughs> thank you again. I'm doing uh, different things in parallel because the next session is a bit tricky. It looks a bit like mission control with the West Coast <laughs> of the US. <laughs> because we're supposed to uh, to have a great pleasure from IBM uh, with us to uh, present the next talk about the uh, the LIO uh, connector uh, for IoT, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Gray and. Francis